So let me start with an introduction. Um, well, I used to work for the Hungarian, Ingatlan, uh, Hungarian property portal, ingatlan.com, which is the market-leading property portal in Hungary, which is in Eastern Europe. I was there for five years. I used to be the CPO there. Maybe you remember f me from last year or the years before. Actually, this is my sixth PPW and the fourth time on stage. So last time I was talking about uh, how Ingatlan handled the duplicates. Before that, I was talking about some monetization issues. So before Ingatlan, I was working for an online agency, uh, handled m many online strategies and the, ex or the planning part and also the execution part. And just recently, I switched to freelancing and consulting. So I'm consulting property portals like you or job portals or some also some. Uh, uh, horizontals. What else you should know about me? I like to travel, so I spent most, if I look at my 2018, I spent more time in Asia than at home. Uh, I like to know, get to know also the people and the cultures um, where I travel. I'm also a digital enthusiastic, not only professionally but also uh, personally, and I'm also the, a member of Mensa. This, this uh, today, what I brought to you, it's, uh, like Simon said, more of an operational topic. Because we have heard the big pictures, we have heard the uh, scenarios, what can happen in the industry in the next five years. Uh, we have seen some very excellent case studies. So right now, I will focus on just one area. It's monetization and it's pricing. And it's uh, mainly for those listing portals who are just thinking about moving to the transaction model but not there yet, and what, could, what uh, you could do in the meantime. Let me start with a quote. It's, uh, this quote is from Tarahant, it's, uh, from, so it, and since I come from a uh, product perspective, I strongly agree with this, this one, that designing your product for monetization first and people, was, uh, people second, uh, that will be probably leave you with neither. So by listening to my suggestions or my point of view of, in terms of monetization. Before that, step zero should be that you should get all the content that's out there to earn the market coverage and uh, to provide a comprehensive search experience for the user, for the searcher, and also to create the best search experience to create uh, market transparency. Actually, what's very similar to uh, and uh, it's based on our talks, but it's very similar to the Hungarian or the Eastern European uh, markets, to the Asian markets, that we, are all, we also don't have regulated markets. Market transparency is not a, not a given. So everybody can be an agent. We have many, uh, many duplicate, listings, duplicate listings are out there, many fake listings are out there, and so on. So step zero should be uh, to create the best user experience and kind of get rid of them. And let's see that, um, how, how monetization can help you with that. Before, uh, before we dive into that, let's look at this chart. This chart shows the value that you create, uh, that you can create based on, uh, that you can create as a portal for your, uh, for your advertisers. And how this value can change over time. In the beginning, there is the traditional advertising model where the value is pretty much the same, so listings are on, on it, on the, your portal, and what you give to, to your advertiser, it uh, doesn't really change if you are pricing slots or if you are pricing placements. After that, uh, there are quality issue comes in, you, you, uh, you start to handle people, I mean uh, people that, we, we, people who are represented by clicks, by impressions, or by leads, or by qualified leads, and so on. And the and this is the transaction. So I won't give you a solution how to enter the transaction model. I can I will talk about what you can do meanwhile, because there are many startups entering, entering many new companies are entering, and they are focusing the, focusing on the transaction based model. And on the other side, there are many listing portals who are also trying to get into the transaction model, but meanwhile they want to grow. And um, getting to the transaction takes time. So by improving the value by getting into the transaction, you need to make the most of your listings. And you can do that by improving your pricing. 
We have many learnings from the advertising model. We have many learnings from the online media when it comes to pricing. Basically, there are three kinds of uh, advertising models in the online media. There is AdView, where the, where the advertiser is charged by how, how, much, how many times their ad is viewed. There is a cost per click, then when they are charged by how many, how much, how many times the uh, advertisement was clicked, or the cost per action, where is some sign of action in the end, some lead is generated, some subscription is made. Um, even the transaction can happen, but some kind of uh, where the transaction happens on, uh, full on the online channel. That's where they use cost per action model. All of these models have, uh, have uh, challenges and have risks. At the CPC model, the main challenge is, is the, the, the risk is at the client side, so at the advertiser side, because they, uh, they are not in charge of uh, the traffic. The portal is in charge of the traffic, so that, uh, the traffic quality can be controlled by the, by the portal. Sometimes advertisers just don't like that, because they say that uh, you can drive whatever traffic you want, and they are not quality traffic, and I don't really like it. There are two solutions I listed here to that. One is that the usage of the thematic portals. Uh, listing portals is a very good example for that, but also financial comparison sites are very good examples of that, because uh, the targeted audience is pretty much... Uh, so they target the right audience, the right audience is coming to the portal, and it, it means value to the advertiser. The other solution is uh, for the CPC model, where it can, uh, to make it uh, generate the most revenue, is the transparency in the results. When you can give transparency, when you, have, uh, give, uh, when you can give the data back to your advertiser, uh, that what, what happened exactly. It's just like Google AdWords. The Google AdWords also gives you back many data when you're advertising. It, uh, it shows your competitors. It shows basically everything what's happening. Uh, I know it shows aggregated data, but it, it shows ex data, and it's transparent, and they don't just have to believe that the traffic has quality. They can actually see it. So that's the challenge in the CPC model. In the CPA model, there are different kind of challenges. Here, the risk is more shifted towards the portal because the market supply demand situations uh, can, can actually uh, influence the result. When the demand is low, so not many people are, want to buy that product which is advertised, not ma or not many people want to buy properties, so the demand is low, then the portal basically takes responsibility over this, over this and cannot really... Um, so cannot really make the, these KPIs higher because there are just not that many people out there who really wants to buy that. There are two solutions to that again. Uh, one is that uh, by what we have also heard here in this morning and um, in some presentations, that you can follow up the transaction for that specific knowledge is needed because the transactions are typically not happening online. They have offline channels, uh, some negotiation phases in there or some kind of... Um, Decision-making is processed there. It's not happening online, so you actually need people to make it happen. Another solution is to make the advertiser committed because they are in the charge of the, uh, of the advertisement or listing quality, and you have to make them interested in make that quality very good. Otherwise, they will just say that, okay, I pay you cost per action, and I just sit back and wait for the results and uh, the quality is not assured there. So these are the challenges in these models. I was purposely not talking about the AdView model because it's not, um, it's not very connected to the listing portals and listing pricing. It's, um, so it's not very used in, in that terms. But here again, the three models, um, how you can make the most of them how you could make most of them when in, um, in the online media. When you sold them in auction, where the prices were not just set to just one unit, to one view or one click or one action, when, the client, when a client can tell how much they want to pay for that. And this way, the revenue can be maximized. 
There are also some challenges on this. Uh, at the ad view part, there is limited placement, so there are just those placements who are generating uh, conversions, and you can, cannot make more of those placements, so it cannot really maximize the revenue. It can maximize the revenue on those placements you have. In the cost per action, there is uh, this responsibility in quality I mentioned, and in the cost per click, which is the most commonly used, there are also some quality issues, in, but on the traffic side. But still, the cost per click is used, and Google AdWords itself uses this. So what's the learning from online media? In online media, the revenue can be maximized with performance-based pricing, when some kind of performance is involved, when some kind of performance that can be controlled by you is involved, and when the client acknowledges the value that is generated on the other side. So let's put these learnings together and go to the listing portals. First, see what, uh, let's see what kind, of, what kind of aspects we can take if, if it comes to listing pricing. First, uh, this is the value delivered again, based on what kind of pricing you use. And there is two kinds of value that the client actually acknowledges. Very simple if you're talking about a um, listing portal. Being present is one, because the clients want to be present, they want to show their brand, they want to um, put up their listings, they want to show their contacts, and so on. And the other one is performance. The performance part starts from somewhere, uh, somewhere from the placement, where the place, because different kind of placements can uh, produce different performances, uh, through impressions, clicks, leads, and so on, until transactions. So these are the two values that uh, client acknowledges that there are. So let's see what's, um, when we include the size and the state of the market, what happens then? The line below shows that uh, what happens in the market, uh, with the market size that you can actually can target when it's, you have a low demand market. And by low demand market, I mean that you have the supplies, you have the developments, and you have the resale segment and everything, but there are not as many buyers in the market just now. So maybe they are not getting the finances from the banks, maybe they have lack of trust with the developers, maybe they have a lack of trust with agents, so there can be a lot of reasons, but uh, let's see a low demand market. At a low demand market, if you concentrate on the transaction, then it, the, the budget that the client spent can actually be lower than, you than when you concentrate on advertising. So in this, in this, in this situation, I would go uh, with, the, uh, with some kind of uh, performance-based pricing where the quality is not an issue yet. So on the, in those cases, what I circle in, the quality becomes a big issue because after, after you generate leads and you just give those leads to the advertiser, uh, they will say, okay, maybe I, I, don't, I cannot, do with some, cannot do anything with this lead. So it's, um, it's really a quality debate with the, with the client that uh, does this. And maybe if it's a low demand market, you, you don't want to go there because it's not, not a very easy debate. So I in this case, you can go back to the, to the performance-based pricing, which is right there in, in my other circle. So based on this, there is the most revenue opportunity when the being present is already there. So the price and the value of being present is there. And there, there is also a performance part that you can use. The, also, sh surely there is a risk in performance-based pricing. There is a medium risk in this case. If you go to the lead-based performance pricing and to the transaction-based performance pricing, in this case, there is a higher risk. So I would take the chance with the medium risk because the, uh, the portals, uh, so those portals who have the content and have the market presence uh, surely need the, the revenue and the money to operate and to grow. Because in this medium risk, the expected revenue can be higher uh, if you don't take the responsibility on the actual transaction number on the market. Because we, don't, we cannot take the responsibility on that. It's, it's not really connected to what, what the portal is doing. So, we have, the perf we, have the, we have taken a look at the market state, the value, and also the performance-based pricing. Let's go 
further, let's go to the dynamic pricing part. By pricing the performance-based part dynamically, the spending can be maximized because the client is the one who is actually telling the price for a, for a click or for an impression for a placement. You don't need to change the prices because the market does it. Uh, you don't need to change the prices by locations or cities because if you make a dyna dynamic pricing, this evens out and they will pay as, as, just as much as it's worth. It can higher your revenue with 30-40%. It's surely a rough, uh, rough estimation, but benchmark shows that. The content and the revenue can be balanced out because if you are a portal with uh, national coverage, then you need the, also those content which you cannot really, really make much money out of because that's how you can attract all the searchers. So it's kind of a brand building activity. So he, in this case, the revenue and the content can be balanced. So let's go back to the dynamic, uh, to this chart. Uh, the same circle which can be priced by performance can be dynamized. And by dynamizing, I don't mean that, let's, let's say that, let's ask the client how much they're gonna pay. Uh, I would say that the being present part should not be dynamized. So that's, that's, your, um, that's your fixed income or fixed revenue. And the other part is the performance part that can be dynamized. So this is the price for listing these two parts together. It can be packaged, it can be bundled. So there are a lot of different solutions to that. Um, in time, uh, after you set a being present part and you start seeing your data, you can calculate how much the being present first for you and for your advertisers. And you can switch your dynamic parts. So just, that just leaves you, leaves us and me, uh, the fourth aspect of pricing, which is, uh, tra which is transparency. I believe that a clear competition can only happen on a transparent market. I'm saying that because what I have seen uh, in many, at many portals, that uh, um, the pricing tables and also the results, what the of the value that the, uh, the advertisers are getting back are not always transparent. So uh, the clients are in debate or in an argument with the portal that how much they should pay, there are discounts and there is not um, a clear uh, table that for this much you need to pay this much. And it's not good because, on the long term, because uh, this, in this way, you are arguing with your customers, so you are the, f the kind of the fight is going to, between on, on you and your customers and not between them. They are, your clients are competing against each other on the market, and if they don't see how the others are doing, they are just competing blind. I put this picture out there, uh, up there because at a running race, it when you participate in a running race, it's uh, quite a good example because if I'm running and somebody is running behind me, that motivates me to run faster. If I'm running in a tunnel and I don't see anybody, that gives us a whole different outcome from the entire competition. So that's, what I'm, that's why I'm saying if the rules are clear and you as a platform are creating those rules, the, then the efforts to win can be maximized as measured. In this case, the efforts are the client spending and, the, and your income. So that just leaves us the four learnings of this, this part. So what to consider when pricing? We went through the, that the value should be pushed towards the transaction. So the value should be pushed towards the transaction. But consider the market size when you are pricing your service. The second one is that being present is important for the client also. That should be included in the price, but the performance can generate the growth, the performance part. If and surely if it's uh, dynamized can uh, ensure the growth more. So you can use the dynamic pricing to maximize your revenue. And the fourth was the transparent price and data for everyone. If you give those to your clients, they will appreciate it and they will see actually how the others are doing and that can motivate the competition between them. So that's it, I think. Thank you. Laura, thank you very much for that. Um, <clears throat> Do you have any questions on Slido? No? Okay. Well, if you've got questions, please send them through. Um, 
what, what, I, what I find fascinating is when you take a step back and you think about pricing in detail, it's actually quite a complex subject. And quite often uh, businesses, not just portals, but businesses in general, don't spend enough time thinking about what's the true value that they're creating that's and pricing based on the value that's created. Rather, they sometimes think about cost, cost plus in pricing, or they let the competitors set their price. Um, the, the, the question I've got is, look, a lot of that makes a lot of sense. The challenge with many of that is implementation. That's right. So, so if we talk about dynamic-based pricing, okay, which is, at the end of the day, um, Google's a good, good example, right? AdWords yep. is, a, is a fantastic. How do you see that coming to fruition in, in, in the online real estate world? How do you see you know, the, the businesses out here implementing a dynamic-based pricing model? I think that you should look at uh, your current KPIs and your current data about what generates value to your consumers right now. Uh, do they understand placement? Do they understand impressions? Do they understand clicks? So what is what your clients understand and what is sellable to them? Because that can, may, that can be dynamized on, on the long run. And because in somehow they should understand that um, the value, what's behind it. And also they should take time that uh, how they can optimize it. So in this case, the responsibility is also on the, on the advertiser side because the optimization lies in their hands. Okay. Now, I think the interesting challenge around that is depending on where you are in the market. So if you're a right move in the market, you get to determine how dynamic the pricing is because you, you, you basically determine the price. That's right. you, you are very strong in the market and you have that capacity. If you are a young, early stage um, business, you have no power in the conversation. And so if I was a young business, would I be better off thinking about dynamic-based pricing or should I at least, which is quite complex to implement, or should I at least start with performance-based pricing? If you're a young company and just start out and you yes. don't have enough listings and you don't have a coverage, dynamic pricing is, won't be a solution for you. So it's more performance-based pricing that you can use that to maximize your revenue, but I think with a fixed part. It depends on the market, of course. Right. So dynamic pricing is more when you are in a dominant position and when the, um, or almost a dominant position, because it helps to get the dominant position. Uh, that's what happened for ingotland.com in Hungary. And also uh, what I was going to say, it's... Um, where the market, it's not as regulated as in the UK, because you said right move. So it works in the listing, uh, in listing cases, it works more on non-regulated markets where the platform can be some kind of regulator. Yes, no, I agree with that. But the other thing that's always interesting with pricing is um, you are leaving money on the table. The challenge is you don't know how much. And we can see that time again. You saw in, in one of my slides at the, at the very beginning today, uh, right move increases price by, I think, average of 11% over the last four years, increased traffic by about 4% per year over the last four years. What that says is that people are happy to pay. I don't know how happy they are, but they are paying um, incrementally more for the same service they were receiving the previous year, which means the previous year you were probably leaving money on the table. So the interesting challenge for all of us is to find out how close we are to that real ceiling in what our customers and will pay for the service. And dynamic pricing is helping that. Dynamic pricing will help us achieve that. So Laura, thank you very much thank for you. the presentation. I think it's a fascinating... <laughs>